So let's talk about shielding gas tanks. Uh, tonight, primarily, we're going to talk about argon, helium, or argon CO2, argon helium mixtures, anything that has a CGA 580 valve. Okay, nitrogen has that too, but nitrogen is different. So here is the ins and outs, what you need to know on those tanks. There's different tank sizes. This one is a 20 cubic foot, 40 cubic foot, up to 60, you don't need a cap. See, there's no threads, there's no cap on there. This is an 80. The 80 is also referred to as a three foot tank to the top of the cap is 35 to 36 inches. The one that's missing here is the 120 cubic foot tank that is 48 to the top of the cap, same diameter than the 80. Then the 160, half an inch larger in diameter and about 52 inches to the top. And then the 330, the big dog. So any argon or argon mixture is typically, typically valved with a CGA 580 valve in the US which this is a common regulator here for that. This is what it looks like. You can tell by the wear marks here. The seal happens on this ball and socket in the valve. There is no need to put Teflon tape on those threads because that nut is loose. Gas can escape in between here anyways because there's no seal, no O-ring seal on here. This gets clamped in tight. The seal has to happen in the ball and socket. So don't ever put any pipe dope or any Teflon tape on your regulators. You hurting yourself more because you can't tighten it down right then it's doing you any good. So typically a pressure rating on a tank like this in the US is around 2000 PSI. Uh, different tanks have different pressure ratings. The pressure rating you can tell here where it says 3AA 2015. This is a 2,000 pound, uh, 2,015 pound tank um, with up to 10%, uh, maybe up to 5% overfill. Now I'm not sure on that. What happens is if you fill tanks in the winter when it's really cold and then you don't use them and then you have them in the summer out in the sun on the hot service truck, they will naturally expand so they can hold a higher pressure, but this is your target, your target fill. On the larger tanks, you see pressure ratings as high as 2400 PSI, again, with an overfill margin. And always make sure when your tank is empty, you mark this properly, MT. So your regulator, to get back to this real quick here, it will show you tank pressure right here. You see that in PSI. And again, you should be about on smaller tanks, maybe 1,800. The medium-sized tanks, 2,000. The large tanks, 2,400 PSI is a full tank. So the gauge does not have to go all the way around. It just goes to about 2,000 pounds for a full tank. On this side here, people say it's a regulator. Yes, it's a regulator, but it's not a pressure regulator. This is a flow regulator. So this one here measures the flow in CFH, cubic feet per hour. So what happens is if you have your flow rate set for 20 CFH because you MIG weld in a shop with the machine on a 20 on a 20 cubic foot tank running 20 CFH you have about 1 hour trigger on time gas flowing time on a 40 cubic foot tank too on an 80 about 4 on a 120 and so on and so forth you get the idea so the larger the tank is, the more, the more use, the more time you get out of this. And if you run MIG aluminum at 50 cubic feet per hour and you have a 160 cubic foot tank, you may only get three hours of trigger on time out of that tank. So these tanks, the big one, unless you have a big truck and you have lifting equipment or you're a He-Man, it's really impractical to lug this around. A lot of companies in a lot of states will not let you will not let you own a tank like this. They typically want to rent it to you. 160, 120, and 80 you can typically own. Um, and then 
you see there's different names in those tanks here. This is from different gas suppliers. Uh, some gas suppliers are real finicky about which tank they take and which one they don't. So they agreed to a rule that anything up to the 80 cubic foot, the three foot tank, any gas supplier typically in the US will take anybody's tank and just switch them out. Where the larger tanks need to go back to the place where they came from typically because they don't want to exchange those. And again, the very large ones typically they want to rent to you to the tune of 85 cents a day or something like this. Um, a fill on these tanks costs you typically pretty much $50, maybe 55 for this, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. So they, they all cost almost the same to fill. You just get more gas with your fill because the cost is not really in the gas. The way how they do the gas is they cool the air down until it gets liquid, they separate it, and then they put the gas that you want out of there from the air. So really, except a little bit electricity and upkeep on the, on the air separation plant, they didn't really have too much hard cash into the gas. It's all the labor of vacuuming the tank, filling the tank, putting new labels on every time you get them, putting the caps on, making sure everything works. And then these tanks also have dates. Like this tank here was first in service in 92. And then um, it had a pressure test done one of 12. So this one here, next time this gets turned in, because this expires 10 years later. So this would be like a, a one of 22, this tank expired. So by the time that this tank is used up and it goes back, it needs to go back, pressure test it, maybe get a new valve. So if you, you have multiple different ways of, you can own, you can own a tank, a non-specific tank out of the pool of rotational tanks. And then this time I have a brown one and next time I could have a blue one and next time after that I could have a green one or whatever the deal is. I don't own a specific tank so I don't have to obey a specific date. What happens is as the tank gets traded in, the gas supplier typically takes care of all the recertification and everything. I just pay for the fill and swap the tank and I get the new tank in a matter of minutes. If I have a personalized tank that has my name in here, I need to drop it off, I need to wait two weeks, I need to pay an extra fee because they are now they need to keep track of my tank. Where is it? Where is it going? And then they have to look for my tank in their fill battery, in their fill plant again. And it's just, it's a lot of headache. I would say you're best off just buying a tank outright, something like this full Today goes for about 180 to 220 bucks. Um, you know, 80 is a good size to carry it around to bring it to jobs. If you do stuff at home, 160 is a good size because you can still lift it and put it in your car without breaking your back. If you weld a lot, you typically have the big ones and you just deal with the weight and the cumbersomeness of this. So now one more little bit bonus footage on here. This is a 100% CO2 tank. What you see here is an adapter. CO2 has a different adapter. And if you want to use your regular argon regulator, which you can do, you need to run an adapter fitting for 100% CO2. And even though nitrogen also gets sold in these tanks with the CGA 580, um, connection. Never use a nitrogen regulator because nitrogen has a pressure regulator, not a flow regulator. And it goes from zero to 500 PSI on the low pressure side. Here on these regulators, because they regulate flow, typically they don't exceed 50 or 60 PSI on pressure. Some even run a lot less depending on the brand. Here you really regulate the amount of gas through the flow that's coming through. On nitrogen, you typically regulate pressure. So I, help, I hope that this helped and uh, it shines some light on this. 
Uh, you can get mixtures in here. Uh, C25, it's 25% CO2, the rest is argon. 100% argon you can get. You can get um, any sort of mixes, C10, 10% uh, CO2 and 90% argon. Helium, helium argon mixture. Anything with helium is typically big money. Uh, helium is like the only gas you can't just get out of the air. Uh, they get it in some caves. There's always a helium shortage and it's just very expensive to use helium. I try not to use too much unless I absolutely have to. Most of the stuff I do is argon or argon CO2 mixtures. All right. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.